So now, in this video, in this circuit, I improved the 555 timer in monostable mode. So we just looked at what the monostable mode is. The output is low until we force the output high, right there. Output's high for a period of time, set by the uh, capacitor there and the resistor, the timing components. And again, I'll do it. I'm gonna hold the button down now though, and now you can see, even though I'm holding down the button, the output went back low. That is thanks to that capacitor right there. It made it, so it's actually more of a pulse generator. Even if you have like a slow input uh, pulse that alternates between like high and low or something, um, this can overcome that where it won't uh, force the output low for a period of time longer than the timing right there. Because if you did, I'm going to uh, simulate that with the uh, jumper right here. I don't have to pull the capacitor out because we're shorting around the capacitor right there. So yeah, there we are at the ground right there. Now, if I hold uh, the button, I can keep that low signal through the button to the reset pin right there. And that's gonna hold the output high. If I yank the jumper now, even if I hold uh, the switch, at some point it's gonna go low. And you wanna pick uh, the value uh, capacitor and resistors here that, uh, they're pull-up resistors, that will allow the capacitor to charge while the button is pressed and then uh, quickly charge when you release it so that you can press it again uh, relatively quickly. So um, we got that. Now I uh, just use the uh, standard LEDs to indicate when the output is high or low. You can see blue LED is lit up, 1000 ohm uh, resistor to the positive supply right there. So we know the output is connected to ground as good as it can. When the red LED lights up, you can see that uh, we got the LED to the negative supply there uh, through the 220 ohm resistor. And that means that the anode, the long lead of the LED, remember it has to be more positive, that side more negative in order for it to light up both of those. Um, but it's connected to the positive supply as good as it can. There's some transistors where you probably lose close to a volt and a half uh, from the positive supply. You get a better connection to ground when the output's low. Be aware of that. We had to disable the reset pin, pin four right there. If we get it a voltage close to zero volts, it has to be pretty close to zero volts, then it's gonna put the output uh, low and keep it there no matter what, um, even if I press the button there. And uh, so we put it to the positive supply, that tells it not to do anything. It's waiting for that zero volt. So now, the other part of the uh, 555 timer monostable circuit, that's just a basic uh, monostable circuit, is the timing part right there. And that's a connection point, by the way. Those uh, lines are all connected. That's a connection, and that's a connection. I know a lot of people like dots, but I'd rather use a little jump where they're not connected. So, any case, there's uh, two systems for showing connection and not connected, whether people like it or not. So, any case, uh, right now, the uh, output's low, blue LED. That means pin seven is also connected to ground. It's also low. It doesn't go high though. It just will turn off. So when you see the red LED light up, that means pin seven is not connected to ground anymore and the capacitor can start charging. When the output is low and uh, pin seven's connected to ground, any current going through the 10K resistor just goes to ground. The capacitor doesn't charge. It starts charging when uh, we press the button the output goes high. The timing is based on the uh, capacitor value and also the resistor value right there. So with the 100 microfarad capacitor and a 10K resistor, it's somewhere about a second it takes to go from completely discharged to charged to about two thirds supply voltage. Pin six is what senses when the capacitor gets to two thirds supply voltage and tells the output to go back low and for pin seven to connect to ground. So now, most of the time, pin two here sees five volts. We have that 10K resistor to five volts. We have the other side of the capacitor right here, but it has a, a 10K resistor also to that five volts. So the five volts also, you know, transfers over. And uh, so in any case, we got uh, the capacitor and um, it's actually discharged. There's uh, no charge difference when we are just in the resting state that we're in now. When I press the switch, you can see this is connected to ground right there, and therefore we have the capacitor show zero volts. The current just gets sucked right through the capacitor quick enough where pin two sees uh, zero volts until the capacitor charges to one third supply voltage. Then pin two starts ignoring every 
bit of voltage above that right there. That's the main thing. Even if you close the switch, the capacitor gets a charge. On uh, that side, this is uh, zero volts ground. That gets up to five volts, as long as you hold the switch long enough. But as long as it's above one third supply voltage, it's a uh, high enough voltage for pin two to stop forcing the output high. So now, with the switch closed and held closed like I just showed there, uh, it uh, connects to ground as we said before. That uh, is above one third supply voltage right now. It's uh, definitely five volts by this point uh, at the capacitor. When I release the switch, um, we still don't have that connection to ground anymore. Pin two doesn't see that. It just sees this right here. But also the uh, capacitor can discharge through the two uh, resistors right there. So that is how we prevent, if you keep the switch closed, having a low uh, voltage to pin two for a long period of time. You just have to make sure that the uh, value capacitor there uh, charges quicker than what it takes for uh, this capacitor to charge to two-thirds supply voltage. So you might have to go, you know, quite a bit lower in value if it's like a real quick pulse that you want. That would, uh, you know, I stretch this out for demonstration circuit uh, purposes. I could have it where a pulse is so quick you barely even notice that it lights up, even as I hold uh, the button down. So might even have to go lower in value than that capacitor. But uh, for this circuit, uh, we don't. Half of a microfarad, 0.47 microfarad, is perfectly fine. So in any case, that's it uh, for this circuit. It's pretty useful though if you just need a brief pulse and uh, you can't press and release the button as quick as you would like. Also, switches bounce. They, you know, make multiple contacts when you, you press them, these mechanical uh, switches. It doesn't matter in this circuit, the output goes high and stays high, even if you bounce a bunch of times. So, you know, you want it to go high and stay high, the, the bounce period is really brief. Um, but uh, if a circuit's counting how many pulses you got or something, responds to every single little uh, press of the switch you make. If it bounces, that will mess things up. This sets the output high, output stays high. Doesn't bounce back and forth between high and low. So you could use that uh, for that purpose as well. So in any case, that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.